What's up, I'm Vin, and today I want to show how to find the center and radius of a circle using completing the square. So for the first question here, we have this equation. And for questions like this, we want to move the constant term to the other side. And we want to get all the x and y terms on the other side. So the first thing we could do here is just subtract 11. And now what I want to do is I want to group together the x terms. So we have x squared and we have minus 4x. So we'll write x squared minus 4x and we'll leave ourselves a little space. And then the next two I want to group together are y squared and 8y. So I'm going to leave a little space, but we're going to have plus y squared, and we're going to have plus 8y. And we're going to leave a space, and this is going to equal, we subtracted 11 to the other side, so we have minus 11. So now we're going to go forward with the process of completing the square. And the technique for completing the square is you have to think whatever the b term is, and the b term refers to the coefficient of x, because in general we have ax squared plus bx plus c for any quadratic equation. So the b term is the x or the y term in this case over here. So we take half of the b term. So in this case, we're going to have negative 4 divided by 2. And then we're going to square it. And negative 2 squared is positive 4. And that's what we're going to add to both sides. So this is the actual process of completing the square. So we're going to go plus 4 on both sides. But now we have to repeat this process for the y, the y expression. So if we look at the b term attached to the y expression, the b term is 8, and we're going to divide it by 2, and then square it, and that's going to give us 4 squared, which is 16. So now we're just going to add 16 to both sides. And now we're ready to go ahead and factor this. So on the left side, we have x squared minus 4x plus 4. That's going to factor as x minus 2 times x minus 2, which we could call x minus 2 squared. And now for the second expression here, y squared plus 8y plus 16, that could factor as y plus 4 times y plus 4. So this is going to make y plus 4 squared. And now the right side, we just add the numbers together. We have, this will make 20, and 20 minus 11 is 9. And you could also think of 9 as 3 to the second power. So now when it comes time to finding what is the center and radius of the circle, we could say here that the center is going to be the point 2, negative 4. Remember, the key here is for center hk, it's x minus h squared, y minus k squared. So we just have to take the opposite of the number inside the parentheses here. So it's going to be opposite of minus 2 is positive 2, and opposite of plus 4 is minus 4. And the radius, we could say here, r is going to be equal to 3, because remember, the radius is being squared. So we just have to recognize 9 is a perfect square is equal to 3 to the second power. So here's our center and radius. So we'll look at another example here. And this time we have the constant on one side, but we have a y term on the right side. We want to move that to the left. So we're going to go plus 10y on both sides. And now we could go ahead and group stuff together. So what we have now is we've got x squared. Then we've got minus 6x. We're going to leave a space. And then we have plus, we're going to have plus y squared. And we're going to have plus 10y. And we're going to leave a space, and this is going to be equal to, notice in this equation here, the minus 10y plus 10y cancels, and we're left with 56. So now we're going to go through the process of actually completing the square. And we think about here, what is half of the b term squared? So in this case here, we're doing negative 6 divided by 2 and squaring this, and that's going to give us positive 9. So we're going to add 9 to both sides of this equation. And now we could go ahead and do this for the other term here. So if we think, and we'll make space over here, if we look at this b term, so we take half of 10 and square it, and that's going to equal 25 when we do 5 to the second power. So we're going to add 25 to both sides. So now we work this out here, and this we could see is going to give us 65 plus 25. So when we work all of this out, we're going to have 65 plus 25 on the right, and this is going to give us 90. So on the right side here, we're going to have 90. And on the left side, we could go ahead and factor this. We're going to have x minus 3 times x minus 3, or we're going to have x minus 3 squared. Plus, and then the y expression is going to factor to y plus 5 times y plus 5. So that's going to make y plus 5 squared. So now we're ready to write out our final answer. Just remember, the radius is being squared. So we just could identify here that um, 90, we could call radical 90 squared, but we'll just go ahead and identify things as is. We'll just say the center is, and now we just take the opposite of the factor terms. So we have opposite of minus 3 is positive 3 attached to the x. 
and then opposite of plus 5 is minus 5. So our center is 3 minus 5, and our radius is equal to the square root of the right side. So we have square root of 90. So this is going to be our radius. If it's an issue that we have to factor this and write it in simplest form, then we could also say here that 90 is equal to the square oh, the square root of 90 is equal to the square root of 9 times the square root of 10. So we could just call this 3 radical 10 as well. So we could say in simplified form, the radius is equal to 3 radical 10. So for this last equation here, now I'm going to look at one that's a little bit different. So when we have an equation like this, we're still going to move the constant to the other side. So we're going to write minus 1 on both sides, and that's going to give us x squared, and we have plus y squared, minus 6y, will leave a space, and this is equal to 0 minus 1, which is minus 1. But one thing that stands out here is that there is no x term. There's an x squared term, but there is no x term. So this is actually going to stay put. We're not going to do anything to this one. However, the other one, the minus 6y, that we could investigate and say half of the b term gives us negative 6 divided by 2 squared is going to equal 9. So in this case, we could add 9 to both sides. And now if we actually work this out, this is going to give us x squared plus, and now this is a perfect square trinomial. This factors to y minus 3 times y minus 3, which gives us y minus 3 squared. And now this is going to be equal to 8. So when we work this one out, sometimes this throws people off when it's just an x squared or just a y squared. But just know that x squared is the same thing as x minus 0 squared. So if we write it like this, and we could actually write it out at this step, call this x minus 0 squared. If that helps, then it's easier for you to see how it matches the formula. And it'll tell us here that the center, the center is equal to 0, 3. Because remember, x minus h, y minus k comes from a center of hk. Like there's a, an opposite relationship between hk and how it shows up in the equation. So our center is going to be 0, 3, and our radius is going to be equal to the square root of 8. Once again, if, if it's OK to leave your answer unsimplified, if that's the standards for the particular class you're taking, then great. But if you have to write it in simplest form, call it the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And then this will be 2 square root 2. So the radius in simplified form is 2 square root 2. OK, well, this is going to conclude this video on identifying the center and radius of a circle by completing the square. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.